background. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the finale of this year's Cybersecurity Month series. In today's session, sorry about that noise. In today's session, discussing ransomware recovery, we are joined by Darren Walton and Rod Yardsey from Zerto, and later on, we'll be joined by Pat Phelan from Switch. For those of you joining us for the first time, I'm just going to take you through some brief housekeeping rules. To the right hand side of your screen, you will see the chat tab. This is public. If you have any issues with sound or want to communicate with peers from the event, please write in here. Next to it, you will see the questions tab, which is private. Only moderators and speakers will see what is written here. We do encourage you to ask questions throughout the webinar, and we'll have time at the end for a Q&A session with both Darren, Rod, and Pat. Now I'll hand you over. Right. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, and thank you for joining the uh, Switch Shop Zerto uh, Recovery from Ransomware session. Uh, and thank you to Amy and Matt once again for inviting us along to the session. Uh, I don't know how many of you saw the little taster session that we did. Uh, last week when we did the five minutes or so just giving you a little a little sneaky peek into what we were covering today but i think i said at the time that uh, what we were delivering would be slightly different to what you have seen in the previous three so i know from aruba and fortinet and ativo you'll have seen some really strong content around around cyber cyber protection and cyber security they'll have taken you through the defense in, defense in depth kind of thing they'll have talked about cyber security and its continuing explosions and growth and what we said we would do is is we come in at, at the back end of that we come into the into the uh, the cyber world on the basis of okay you've got defense in depth what happens if you're still compromised what do you do about the recovery piece it's been a piece that hasn't been talked about as often uh, and as widely as the protecting piece but it is still very very important as i think we discussed last week i think some of the guys may have in those previous sessions have said that the mindset has moved away from you know if i get uh, uh compromised to you know, to when I get compromised, what am I going to do? What's the plan B? What's the what if scenario? And that's what we're going to cover today. So I'm just going to just go on to, I think the next slide's agenda, I think, Ron, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little about the landscape. Again, the guys in the other sessions will have gone into this in far more depth. I mean, we all know the issue, so we're not going to, we're not going to go overboard with that. But we still, as an organisation that's, that's dedicated and committed to helping organizations recover from ransomware we still have to have a finger on the pulse we still need to know which way that's moving because as somebody said this morning on a call it's a bit like an arms race the faster people trying to prevent uh, these things occurring the, the bad guys or the bad actors are trying to develop things that get around the protection so we'll talk about the landscape briefly we'll talk about the concept of cyber resilience which is that not if but when uh, and then rod will take over and talk about how we how zerto matches the ransomware threat and then we'll go into a into a recover from ransomware demonstration which shows you how quick and easy it is to get uh, to get back from that position that hopefully, fingers crossed, you don't find yourself in. Please run. So again, apologies if some of this was covered by some of the, some of the other guys in the previous sessions, but we look at a lot of uh, IDC reports and Gartner reports, uh, and a lot of this we're, we're very aware of this now. We don't need IDC to tell us that the number of attacks are increasing. You know, year on year, month on month, week on week. I was doing something else this morning. I just sat in a, in a, in a, in a coffee shop this morning and, and, and just Googled uh, ransomware attacks this month. And there was loads among various reports. So we know it's increasing. We know it's working. We know the, the requirements for, for money they want to supposedly unlock you uh, are increasing as well. We know a lot of them are, are successful. Uh, and the, the key thing, I guess, is, is you've, got, you've got data corruption or loss and downtime. And those are the real cramps that really impact a business. So that's just to set the scene that Zerto do track this uh, because we're obviously trying to help you recover from this, from these occurrences. Yes, please, on. <clears throat> so I guess uh, we're not on a video camera, okay, but I, I guess uh, what has moved is, is back in the good old days. I, mean, I used to be heavily involved in cyber. We were, we were protecting systems, we were perfecting design, uh, devices, we we're protecting the edge and the perimeter and all that kind of thing. But of course, that, that's long gone away now. It's about safeguarding the data wherever that data resides. So the right data available to the right people, you've got confidence in the data. Uh, and that's what that's how the game's kind of moved on in the last few years. Yes, please, Rod. 
this was an in, an interesting insight because this was from a from a third party. Because I guess, you know, from our perspective, it would be very easy to say, well, you know, you you develop ransomware recovery software, so you would say that that, that cyber guys are never going to be able to prevent a, a, an attack in the first place. But I think it's generally accepted by by third parties and by Gartner and IDC and other and other well respected organisations in the industry that you know prevention isn't the answer because you simply can't prevent it you know no disrespect to the guys you've spoken to previously on the on the cyber side no disrespect to the organizations that are doing their damnedest to keep this thing keep these people out it will still happen so it's that mindset from if we can't provide if we can't prevent it in the first place how are we going to survive and how are we going to recover for, from it yes please on so th this gave rise, and I think this came from the cyber industry rather than from the, the storage and backup industry. This came along this concept of cyber resilience, because a lot of a lot of talk around cyber is the actual, how do we uh, prepare for it? How do we identify the, the, the assets and the data we need to protect? How do we detect it if there's something happening? How do we respond? So you, you, know, you might isolate something on a network. But th from our perspective, the real key thing to this is when they added in the recover piece. Uh, so that that adds up to the to the cyber resilience uh, mantra, if you like. Yes, please, Ron. Uh, yep. So it's this: you build a strong process and culture. So it's it's product, process, and people on the left hand side to be to get to uh, prevent attacks as much as you physically possibly can. Uh, but on the other hand, now in this idea of mitigating this risk and being able to to respond and bounce back and get back to business as usual is ensuring that you have a, a, a solution or a product and a producer in place to get your systems back up and running and recover your data should the worst happen yes please run and then again i don't know you know that the, the national institute of standards and technology it's, it's american an american body and these are the guys that did the, the thing we just mentioned it, it was about you know, taking this from a cyber security and a cyber perfection, protection point of view is identify and protect, detect, respond. But what they, they added in, please Rod, they added in this recover piece, which is just, you know, a, a tacit acknowledgement that despite doing all the other four things incredibly, exceedingly well, you still need that recovery piece in place just in case the answering the what if scenario. Yes, please Rod. And then what we've got here is just a uh, an example. It's it's a public company. If anybody knows Ten Carter, they're based in the Netherlands, and they make uh, very very high tech protective materials, everything from military applications through to firefighting, that type of thing. Uh, multi billion, uh, multi million, multinational company. Uh, this is on our website. This is publicly available, so they don't mind us talking about this. So they got uh, compromised. I think it was about three, possibly four years ago. As it says there, they were using, they were using backup, they were using tape in this instance. Uh, and the two figures that, you know, you're instantly drawn to is the uh, the amount of, or the time it took to recover, which is two whole weeks, and the amount of data they lost, which was, which was 12 hours worth of data. What it doesn't show in here, because they didn't pay, <clears throat> they didn't pay the ransomers, but what it doesn't show in here is what it cost them both financially in terms of resources, in terms of people, in terms of just throwing money at it to get back to where they were prior to the attack. Uh, you know, uh, so there's a lot of downstream costs involved in this uh, and it can really catch companies out. And then as, as vendors do, of course, we've set that proposition up. So if Rod clicks through once more, we see that the second time they got hit, they were very unfortunate, they got, they got, they got attacked twice. But in the second instance, they'd actually installed and put Zerto in their infrastructure. So again, if you just look at the, the bottom items there, so previously time to recovery, two weeks. Now you can do that in under 10 seconds. You know, that's, I mean, that is like night and day, that that saving alone in times of getting back to business as usual is staggering. And the data loss from 12 hours data down to 10 seconds. So it, this is all referenceable. It's all over our website. You can get, you can request the, the white paper if you like. Uh, they're a huge, uh, they're a huge advocate of ours. But those are some significant, significant savings in terms of uh, downtime, application, unavailability time, and actual data loss. So again, I think 
for those of you who attended the session last week, I did say, and it wasn't to, it wasn't to, wasn't to crutch anybody out, and I'm not going to ask anybody on this call. I just said if you attended the taster session and are going to attend this session, just have a wee think yourself that if the worst happened to you, you know, realistically, how long do you think it would take to get your systems back up to a business as usual status, and how much data you could potentially you could potentially lose as a result of that attack. And that, so if you've got that idea in your head or you, you make a rough, guess, rough guesstimate, what Rod's now going to come on to do is show you through a demonstration of just how quickly Zip can get you back online and minimize that data loss. Yeah, thanks, sir, Darren. Um, yeah, hello, everybody. I'm um, Rod Jasley, and I'm a systems engineer at Zerto. I uh, just want to give you a quick overview of, of Zerto before we jump into the lab. You know, um, as, as Darren said, uh, you know, one of our main use cases is, is being able to recover from scenarios like ransomware. And, you know, once, once you have been uh, compromised, how quickly can you get back? But that's just one of, you know, multiple use cases that are uh, data protection platform can be used for okay we, we're also known for disaster recovery moving uh, workloads you know from from on-prem into the cloud uh, we can do things like continuous backup um, uh, long-term retention and then also one of those uh, one of those main use cases is, is, is recovering from ransomware as well okay um, and how we're doing that as well is you know we're a software only solution okay um, and we, we integrate into the hypervisor. So, um, you know, we're, we're protecting those virtual workloads and and um, because of the way that we, we replicate the data and we're backed by a journal as well, so there's no snapshots, there's no agents and, and all the sort of, you know, impact that, that, that those type of solutions have on, on the uh, production um, environment, okay? Now, um, let me just come in to get my lab up. Uh, hopefully you can see that. So um, what we're going to do today is um, just, I, I was going to simulate a, a sort of ransomware attack, okay? We just encrypt some files on a file server that's being currently protected by Zerto, okay? And then I'm going to show you how easy it is to then be able to go and recover those files and folders from that journal from seconds before, you know, they were encrypted, rather than having to go to like last night's backup and potentially having all that data loss. Okay, so um, this is this is the Zerto interface. You know, when you log in, it's going to give you an overview of your environment. You know, what you're protecting, your average RPO for for the various sites and so on. Um, and then, you know, what, when we protect virtual machines, we put them into what we call a protection group, and this is the protection groups here. Okay, now for this example. Um, I've got a file server that is being protected by Zerto. There's a bunch of my files that I've been working on during the day, you know, and by mistake, I've clicked on something that I shouldn't have clicked on, okay? And, you know, for all intents and purposes here, we've encrypted my data, okay? Um, and these files are now useless to me, okay? Um, we know roughly this happened at 3.46. So, you know, I can then go um, to the Zerto interface Okay, and we can look at you know a couple of options of how I'm going to recover that data. And the first way I'm going to show you is is by just doing a file level restore. Okay, so this is the um, the VPG that has that file server in it. Um, I'm going to select it. I'm going to restore. I want to restore files. Okay, I'm just going to find my server from the list, which is this one here. Go next. I'm now presented with. Um, all the checkpoints and options from inside that journal, okay? And they're all, you know, roughly a few seconds apart. Um, and what I'm looking for is one uh, that's roughly uh, just before 3.46. Um, so we'll take this one here. You can start the mount. Now, if... You know, what's going to happen now is in the background, we're going to mount that journal directly onto one of our um, appliances, and then I can browse that folder. So we'll just wait for a few seconds. You can see we have a running task here that's looking to browse it.
just going to check that I have actually selected the right server. Sorry. And I appreciate while, while uh, Rod's doing this, it's not exactly a spectator sport watching this demonstration happen. Uh, but what you can see from this, it's just, it's just, it's just Rod, it's just one person, one interface, using a very, a few simple, very simple clicks and mouse clicks, uh, rather than needing, you know, a three inch thick run book, six or seven different people from six or seven different departments or disciplines, all having to put the plan together to make it work. This can be done very quickly, very easily by one individual. Uh, which again just shortens that time from from the incident occurring to you being back to where you were previously. And I think the I don't think we we touched on that. I'm not sure. But the other thing you can do with with Zerto, I don't know whether Rod will come on to this. So if he does, I apologise for stealing his thunder. No, that's okay. The other important thing with with having a disaster recovery plan in place is is the level of confidence you have in that plan. We've seen it in the past where the plan was done. It was a beautifully crafted plan. It might be done a couple of three years ago. But, you know, has it been tested recently? Has it been tested vigorously? Has it been tested in the face of any changes to the infrastructure? Uh, mm. And people testing those DR plans, it can be a real ordeal. It tends to be very manual. It tends to require a lot of man hours effectively. Uh, and sometimes the results can be can be reasonably in inconclusive. But if you're working in so, environments where there's there's compliance issues or there's regulatory issues and you need to be able to... Uh, test your DR plan and prove to an auditor that you can pass that. Zerto has a really, really powerful disaster recovery testing uh, facility in the product as standard. So you can test a VM, an application, a network, a site at any time you like. There's no impact on production whatsoever. And it trots out a very nice report at the end that you can deliver. Some of our clients in health, for example, deliver that report directly to the auditor to prove that they've got a DR plan, they've tested it, and it passed the test. And that's another key element to disaster recovery because the time you find that your DR plan is not up to scratch, you don't want that to be in the middle of a, of a disaster itself. So that's just another uh, another benefit of using the, the Zerto platform. And as I say, it's not an add-on. It's okay. not a cost. It's, it's part and parcel of the, of the standard product. Okay, so yeah, thanks, Darren. So that's now... Um the, the, the journal has been mounted, okay, and I can now browse the journal, okay, and I can go to my file share, and now I can see that my data sheets and the documents are back, you know, as, as pre before they have been encrypted, okay. So to save on time, I'm just going to select a couple of them, but, you know, I could easily, just as easily select the whole file, and then I have a couple of options, okay. I can either download those files up to a zip file, to then be able to go in and cleanse them, validate that we remove the malware and stuff before I then move it back to a location for the user. Or, in the, as in this instance, I'm just going to restore those directly back to the source location. Okay. By that, I give I give a um, an account that has admin rights to the source VM to be able to restore those, and I hit the restore button. Okay. And now, um, what's going to happen is Zerto is going to start to uh, recover. And as we can see, there is already a Zerto uh, restore folder that's been created. And in a few seconds, those files are going to start reappearing back into my server. Okay? And this is literally um, a few seconds before I clicked on that file and encrypted my data. So there's not huge amounts of data loss. Okay? Um, so as we can see, there's a running task here in the background, and it's just going to go in and start pulling those files out and putting them back onto the server for me. So we'll just give that a few seconds and they'll start to appear. Now that is one way of, you know, being able to recover, let's say, file level recovery, okay? But it's also very similar if, if the whole virtual machine has been encrypted, okay? And then, you know, what we can then do what we call an instant VM restore Again, from that journal, so it's a matter of, you know, selecting that restore option down here again. Um, instead of doing a file, I want to restore a VM. I would go and find that the virtual machine, um, select the point in time from the journal that I wish to recover from, 
and then we can uh, instantly restore that VM back to the production environment. Okay, we can even do things like um, give it a new IP address or put it into a different network. Uh, we can assign a new MAC address. If those are all you know possibilities and options that you can predefine as we're recovering. Now, as you can see, these files are already now starting to reappear back in. And that whole process has taken me a few minutes, you know, from when I first clicked on the, the files and encrypted them to actually being able to get them back um, into my environment without having to go to like last night's backups and so on. Okay, once I'm happy that those dates, that those files are cleansed, you know, and, and we've got rid of the issue, I can, you know, uh, select them all and I put them back into the location and you know clean up clean up the stuff uh, clean up my um, the, the other files and so on so that's that's one way of doing it and as I said um, once that's done I would come in here and I basically just stop the mount of the journal so we can stop that and we're going to unmount it. And I'll just quickly show you the options for doing an instant VM restore. We, that takes a little bit longer to restore, so we won't go all the way through it, but I'll just show you the options. So I'd go here. I'm going to select that I want to restore a VM. Again, I find the virtual, mach virtual machine from the VPG, which is this one here. Next, I'm presented with all the checkpoints, all those checkpoints, which are literally seconds apart from each other. I would go and find one that was uh, timestamped before the incident happens. So we know it was around 3:46, so I could come down here. Uh, there's three, you know, 3:45 will do. Is a few seconds before, 30 seconds before the next. I now have the ability to, you know, I can I can rename rename that machine if I want. I can put it onto a different data store. Um, we have a commit policy. Let me just set that to none. Because um, that means the commit policy means that, you know, I, I've still got the option to be able to roll back. If I've selected the wrong checkpoint, I recover the machine. It's not quite quite right. I can roll it back. I can come back in here. I can select a different point in time until I'm happy that I've got, you know, past the issue. OK, um, I do want to shut down the source virtual machine. And also, you know, if I wanted to um, put it into a different network, I could select different networks from in here. I can sign a new MAC address. I can either give it the same IP address or I can do a static IP address. For this purposes, I'll do as the same IP address. Um, we won't worry about the MAC address. Um, hit done. And then we go next and we we start this, we start the instant VM restore. And if I go and have a look at my hypervisor, You know, this will take a little bit, this will take a few minutes longer, but already I can see that my source VM is being powered off because that's what I've asked it to do. Um, it's now creating the new machine for me, renamed as I asked it to be, you know, hyper missile. It's now going to power that machine up for me. It's going to put it into the right network. It'll give it the IP address. I can then log into it and validate um, whether or not that machine has been recovered or not. Um, if for any reason it hasn't, I can come back here. I can either roll it back, like I said, which will regress all of that, and I can go select a different point in time, or I can commit it, which means I'm happy with it, and that machine is now running um, back on my production environment. And again, this takes minutes, okay? And that's that's restoring the whole virtual machine from that journal. In this instance, I'm just going to roll it back. So I just hit roll back, and if we come in here, we should see. It's already got rid of the machine and it's going to power back on the source VM for me and bring that machine back up. And I can go and now select a, a, a different checkpoint and try the process again. So um, what I'm trying to show this is just how simple it is to, to be able to do these recoveries from inside the Zerto interface. It's literally a few clicks of a button. And then your, your, your data is back from seconds ago. Um, and that's really what I've got for you in the demo. I don't know if there's any questions or anything from, from the group. Hi, Rod. Um, yeah, I think there are a few questions here. The first one, we'll go for this one. What are the recovery options? Okay, 
So the recovery options, again, I mean, what I've just shown you there is being able to recover from ransomware and what we call having a, a local journal and local recovery. But as I said, we also have multiple use cases where we have disaster recovery, where you can have remote journals. So we can then start spinning up virtual machines, you know, on a different data center or in the cloud, okay, depending if you've had a full outage on your production data center, okay. Um, we support things like a one-to-many and um, bi-directional replication and reverse replication for those. So depending on where your workloads are and where you're trying to protect them to, it's all managed from inside our interface. Fantastic, Rod. There's a question in here as well for you. Now, do you have any embedded detection or prevention measures built into the platform in itself? And if so, what are those features? What do they look like? Right. Um, yeah. So as, as Darren alluded to at the start of the thing, we're not really a uh, prevention detection system. OK, we're about, uh, you know, there are other tools out on the market that are specifically designed for that. And it's all part of, you know, that that toolbox and the different tools that you have in that to be able to protect yourself from from these type of um, outages and um, disasters. Right. Um, so Zerto is more about that recovery. You know, once you have been uh, compromised, you know, how do we get our data back? Uh, can we recover it to a different location, uh, maybe into a staging area to be able to cleanse the data before it's moved back to production? And that, that's what Zerto is all about. Yeah, indeed. So even been able, indeed, or even being able to look at the actual environment that was potentially compromised whilst recovering that data and getting it pre staged and ready to go again. So, it, understood. Exactly. Um, the, the next question is, does Zerto support cloud storage options such as SharePoint and OneDrive? Right. Um, at the moment, Zerto, you know, our main product, which I'm showing you here, is all about virtualized environments, uh, vir environments okay? So on-premise, in the cloud, running on a virtual machine. Things like SharePoint Online or SaaS-based applications, um, they're not protected by our main product, but we do have a separate product called um, Zerto uh, Backup for SaaS, which is for backing up and protecting those type of um, workloads. Thanks for the answer. Uh, next follow-up question is, what protection do you have from someone, interestingly, who may try to delete backups from Zerto itself? So for example, a user who has a compromised account within Zerto. Okay, yeah. So we have, the ability of, as well, with version nine of our software is to, um, we support immutable copies of the data that can be sent to um, AWS S3 immutable storage using object lock, okay? That way, once that data has been sent there and sitting there, it cannot be overwritten, it cannot be deleted, okay? So that is, you know, um, the, the sort of final copy of the day. So if you've lost everything on premise, all your all your journals and everything have gone there, we have that ability to have another copy off site, isolated, immutable, which we can then reattach and start recovering to that staging area and start rebuilding your environment from there. Perfect. That sounds fantastic. And I think you've actually answered, Roy, a couple of the other questions that I can see here if I was to try and consolidate these now. So you've mentioned immutable storage options or storage copies and also storing them in different locations as well, as well as pointing them to different places. So that's fantastic. Mm. And I believe that concludes the questions we have at this point in time, unless there's any other questions we can take. No, again, guys, I think we made the offer at the start. I don't know whether it's myself or Rob, but if if any of you want to talk about this uh, in more detail, we've we've just given you a you know a sixty four thousand foot version today. If you want to go this in a bit more detail and maybe have a one to one conversation where we can talk more specifically about your particular infrastructure, uh, please contact uh, Matt and Amy or Pat at at Switch. We're quite happy to pull that together as well for you. Uh, but with just today, we just gave you a whistle stop tour just to give you a bit of food for thought. But if there's anything to, further you want to see, please uh, please don't hesitate to contact the guys at Switch Shop. That's appreciated, Darren. Thank you very much. Amy, over to you. Brilliant. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, Rod. Um, thank you, everybody, for attending this webinar. And if you've come to some of the other webinars throughout the series, thank you for coming to experience cyber security Month with us. Please stay tuned for the prize winner announcement of the Ultimate Cybersecurity Starter Pack. 
and just to repeat what the other guys have said if you've got any further questions or want any more information the details are on screen there thanks everyone thank you guys thank you everybody thank you Bye. Thank <laughs> you.